Hello, Roman. Okay, so the next program in Chapter 8 is Sum of Digits in a String. Okay, so write a program that asks the user to enter a series of single-digit numbers with nothing separate in them. The program should display the sum of all the single-digit numbers in the string. For example, if the user enters 2, 5, 1, 4, the method should return 12, which is the sum of 2, 5, 1, and 4. Right, so the user is going to type in basically a number. It could be a long number like, you know, 2514 or anything like 87275. What we, have to, what we have to do is to write a program that's going to go through each of the in individual digits in this number, add them all up, and return the sum. So in the case of this example, the user typed in 2514. We have to write a program that's going to go through it, take all these individual numbers, 2514, add them all up, and return the sum. Okay. So let's write a function for that. Now, you can write a function to get the user's value, the user's number. You can write a separate function for that and write a separate function to get the sum of the individual digits in that string. You can do that. But, I mean, since that line, okay, that's going to get the user's input. It's going to be just one line. You know, you don't necessarily have to unless, you know, it's unless you're doing more, more than that. So let's just not create a function for that, although you can. Let's create a function that's going to just do all the stuff in one. So I'm going to define a function, I'm going to call it get sum of user number, right? It's because it's going to take a user number and it's going to get the sum of, or we can even make it descriptive. We can say get sum of digit, right, in user number. Yeah, that's, I think, more descript descriptive. But you can call it anything that makes sense to you. So get sum of digits in user number. This, if we want to get the sum of digits in the user number, we need the user's number. The user needs to provide that number. Anyone who calls this function has to pass in the user number into this function so we can use it as, a, as an argument. And so we need to define a parameter for that value. So I'm going to call that parameter, that define a parameter, I'm going to call it user number. Before you call this function, you need to pass in the user number. And what I want us to do is write a loop that is going to go through this number here. Um, Actually, let's see here. Um, yeah, so in the main function, we'll use the input function to get the, the value from the user and then pass it into this function, okay? So what I want us to do is write a loop that's going to go through this number, access each element, each character, all right? And then we're going to take these numbers and add them all up. So let's start our loop. So I'm going to create, well, well you can use several ways, you know, using loops to access these each individual element in a string. You can. Um, I normally like to use indexing to access access individual elements in a sequence or in a list or in a string. I normally like to use indexing. But there are also other ways, you know, all this easy, you know, kind of short ways to do it. So I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do the, 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 the short way. Normally I like to use indexing, but I'll, I'll do it the short way and then I'll also show you how you can do it using indexing, okay? But normally I like to use indexing. Anyway, so I'm going to do it using the in operator. Well, not the in operator, sorry, the in keyword. It's just basically in, the in keyword. So I'm going to say for, um, let's see, so for current, I like to use current because this, this number would change, this value would change, it changes all the time. So I'm going to call it for current double R. So for current digit, and I'm going to call name it for current digit as a string in this user number okay all right actually let's let's be more descriptive this this value here okay we know that it's going to be a string oh well it's not going to be you can you know so uh, let, let's let, let's keep it as user number right because you can write a program that will pass it into this function as, a, as an integer or you can write a program that will pass it as a string so let's just leave it here but we're going to assume it's going to be a string so for current digit as a string in user number, right? So if the user passes in this value here, if you use the input function, by default, it returns a string. So when you write a loop, when you write your loop this way, it's going to iterate through every single character, right? The first time this loop iterates, it's going to assign two to current digits as a string. And it will be a string, it won't be a number. It, it will actually be a string. The next time it iterates, it's going to assign five Okay, two current digit as a string, and that's why I'm naming it this way. So, and the thing is, it will be a string, but we, if we want to add them all up, then we need to kind of convert it, but we'll get there. 
So I just want you to know that each time that I trade, the first time that I trade, it's going to assign the first number as a string to this. And th the next time that I trade, it's going to assign the second digit as a string to this var variable. And we can use it. So this is the using the in keyword. So for current digit as string in user number, okay, what we want to do with it, do what we want to do with it is so assuming the user typed in 2514, we get two as a string. It will be stored here. We want to start adding all these numbers up. We want to start accumulating it up, um, them, them up. So I'm going to create a variable up here in our function. I'm going to call it sum of digit in a string or oh, in user number. Let's call it in user number. So sum of so sum of digits in user number. Initially, it's going to be zero, right? Before you start counting, it's zero, right? So we get the first value as a string here. We need it as a number. We can't add strings, okay, to get a number, right? We want to add, add, do math with it. So we need to make sure this value here is going to be an integer, like an int. So we get this value, okay, next time I try to get this value, next time I try to get this value. The first time we iterate, we get two. Let's convert that value, okay, to an int. And I, I'm going to do that with an int function. So I'm going to call the int function and pass in this value. Okay, to the int function. The int function is going to take this value and convert it to an integer and return it. It's going to return it back to us. So when it's returning it back to us, we need a place to store it. So that whatever value is coming back to us is the current digit. This time it's not as a string, it's as a number. It's been converted to a number. We can even say it's been converted to an int just to be you know descriptive. So whatever value that's coming back to us is the current digit as a, as an int. Let's call it that. It's going to be the current digit as an int. All right. So before that, it was a string. We converted to an int. And then now we want to start adding it up. We want to start accumulating it, adding it up to sum of digits in a, in a user number. So sum of digits in a user number is going to be equal to what's already stored in sum of digits in a user number plus the current digit, this time as an int. We have it as a number, so we can start adding it all up. So sum of digits in a use in, in user number will start off as being zero, right? This loop we know is going to go through this number, like this this you know whatever the number the user types. As human user types in two five one four, first time it iterates is going to um, take it's going to take two, and it's going to assign it to current digit as an as a string. We need it as a number, so we convert the current digit as a as a string from a string to an int, and we store it in current digit as an int. And then, sum of digits in the user number will be zero, right? So it's going to be zero plus that number converted to an int, so two. Zero plus two gives you two. We take two and we store it in sum of digits in the user number. The second time it iterates, it's going to take the next number, five, and store it in current digit as a string. It will be a string, we need it as a number. So we take the current you know, digit as a string, we convert it to an int, and we store it in current digit as an int, and then we accumulate. Now, sum of digits in a user, num user number, so far, it's two. So we take sum of digits in a user number, which is two plus five as an int. So two plus five gives us seven, right? And the seven will be stored in sum of digits in a user number. So we are accumulating this number, but we are making sure that the current digit as, an, as a string is going to be is converted to an int as it's it's an actual number. So by the time this loop is done, we'll have we'll go through all the individual characters or all the individual digits as a string in this in this entire entire string. Add them all up. Before that we convert them to an int, add them all up. By the time this loop is done, we'll have all the individual num uh, numbers in that string added up. So outside of this loop, okay, outside of it, we when we're done with doing that, when we're done adding all the numbers up, we return the sum of digits in the user number. User number. We return it. That's that's all this function is going to do. So let's create our main function. Because in most programming languages, the main function is where your program starts. It's where you, you type, you start typing your program, start creating your program. It's the function that calls every other function. And so in Python, it's good, good practice. We also do that. So I'm going to create a main function and then the first thing we want to do is we want to create a code that's going to get the, the, user, the user's number. The user has to type in that number for us, right? So I'm going to use the input function to do that. Now the input function takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in 
what you want to display to the user as, as a prompt, like a question, some kind of question. So as a string, I'm going to tell the user, please enter um, a series, right? It says over here, write a program that asks the user to enter a series of single digit numbers. So we can, let's tell the user that. So please enter a series of single digit numbers. So the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box and it's going to display this string to the user. It's going to say, please enter a series of single digit numbers. So the user is going to type in a series of single digit numbers in that text box, okay? And this input function is going to take the user's value that, you know, that the user typed, okay? And it's going to return it back to us. It's going to send it back to us as a string. When it's returning it back to us, we need a place to store it. Okay, that value is going to be the user's number, or we can even call it user, the user's um, series of single digits. That's, good, that's going to be a long name, but you can call it that. I'm going to call it for now user number. Okay, so we're storing that value in user number. 